Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. Someone wrote in wanting to know about polymorphic crystals or crystals that can have more than one crystal sh uh, shape. What an unusual thing when you think about it. And examples are rather limited in, in the minerals that we have. We have about 3,000 3, minerals, 300 of which are pretty commonplace, valuable and expensive, but you'll find them in, uh, in industry, diamond tips, for example, diamond tip drill, uh, and, um, and, other, and also in, as jewelry. What's a polymorph? Okay. I have two classes, types of minerals to show you. This is calcite. Notice with this calcite sample, the trigonal crystal form. But if you know geology to any degree, you'd say, wait a minute, it's supposed to have octahedral form. Like this. Octahedral. These are polymorphs. Here's another example. Trigonal. Go over there. Same chemical composition. Different. Um... Uh, a crystal shape. What causes the different crystal shape when it's the same calcium carbonate, when it's the same mineral? Heat and pressure. Differences, specific differences in heat and or pressure will cause one molecule made of a, one substance to take a form of either one crystal shape or another. A calcite is an example of that. Let's look at carbon. Here's carbon, anthracite coal. Looks nothing like a diamond. This is made entirely of carbon. Here's a diamond. This also is made out of all carbons and no other elements. So why do they have different crystal forms? The answer is the diamond is subjected to large amounts of pressure and heat underground, far underground, near the uh, asthenosphere. Not quite toward that that far, but on the, you could say the bottom side of the crust in the asthenosphere. What's going on? It's the same molecule. All right, here's what's going on. I'm gonna grab my special super duper uh, lighter pointer. This is calcite, octahedral. Down here you have the key. Small one's calci calcium. The big blue one's carbonate. Here are the carbonates. Here are the calcium. CO3. CaCO3. And then in this shape, the trigonal one. The red again is oxygen. The little black ones are calcium and carbon. They're virtually the same molecular structure. So they have the same empirical diagram, empirical formula. The reason why they're different in shape is because of the type and amount of heat and pressure, heat and or pressure, that these minerals are subjected to. It causes the molecules to take on a different shape when you apply heat and or pressure. For example, here's graphite, found in coal. Notice the uh, hexagonal rings are attached. Each brown, I should be using my lighter. Each brown uh, circle represents a carbon. And they form sheets of this, many, many sheets. So they're slippery, they slide along the planes, and we use them in pencils as graphite. 
But here, okay, that's graphite. But here's a diamond. Notice the carbons are hooked up, of course, with a valence of four still, but in a different configuration. A polymorph. And I have another diagram just showing you the, di the diamond, molecular structure for the diamond. Notice the arrangement of carbon bonds and graphite. Notice how they lie on top of each other. Diamond, by the way, on most hardness scale is the hardest of all minerals. Its hardness is rated as 10. Even though they may contain the same empirical formula, empirical means a formula that shows what kind of elements are in the molecule, even though they're identical, they actually have different chemical properties in term, and physical properties, such as melting point. Uh, in fact, this diamond, beautiful diamond, over many millions and millions of years, will revert back to carbon, graphite. So keep those questions coming, whatever is your interest. Remember, I sell also beautiful specimens of beautiful uh, minerals and crystals. In the beginning of my business, when I was establishing my business, I traveled the world collecting beautiful minerals. And I have them all displayed in display boxes. If you're interested in any mineral and would like to buy them for me, most minerals are $3 each. This is carnelian. My favorite. Blue sodalite. Look how blue. I have more here. Here's a big chest. I've finished my prospecting for the winter. <clears throat> we see um, <clears throat> obsidian, obsidian uh, pillay weighing approximately at least 50 pounds. This is chalcedony. Chalcedony, also large chunks of chalcedony. And well, this isn't so valuable, but it looks beautiful and it has a large size. It's it's a uh, pink uh, uh, pink. Uh, fl um, it's a uh, pink. Uh, Calcite. I have other colors of calcite here too. Gray calcite, clear. My they're here. The orange quartz, nitrogen, clear quartz. And I have these minerals over here. This is picacol. Picagol, Schiller, look at that. Amazing rock. And then in addition to those, I also have a collection for uh, more of a studio, stu stu it's more of a a studious subject of the more common types of rocks and minerals that play an integral part in massive regions of the earth, containing such specimens as vesicular basalt, uh, diorite, these are uh, uh, igneous rocks, graphite, the, the uh, diorite and graphite are um, internal of the uh, volcano, so we call them... Um, Intrusive and lava that makes it to the surface is extrusive. I have uh, siltstone, red shale, talc, black chert, red aventurine, scoria, another igneous rock, siltstone, slate, 
a lot. If you're interested in any of these, please let me know by email. My email is frankriserrocksminerals at gmail.com. Riser is R-E-I-S-E-R. -E and always remember to keep looking down.